Hey, so welcome. You've either been on the webinar with me this last day or you haven't been there and you've missed it and you want to catch up. Here's a quick summary of what we covered. First of all, it's brought to you by Whistle to Whistle, which is my defense coaching and sports leadership company, which is going to be there for you every step of your journey to becoming the best defense coach you can be. Defense is the cornerstone of rugby. And as you saw the box and England, it is the key to success at the highest level. The objective of today is to give you that defensive uh, base in terms of your set piece defense so you can go straight onto the pitch and basically coach um, set piece defense at another level. I'm going to give you the key principles, objectives, processes and principles. They're going to give you the detail to get on top of attack. Remember set piece defense gives you the ability to be in control from the first step. Okay, it's unlike turnover attack and counter attack, sometimes you can be on the back foot. Set piece defense, we want to get on top of the attack and put our dominance on them. The second objective here is to give you a support from my website perspective. I encourage you to go visit the website. The Collision Magician and the Mobility Series that's on there is going to take your physicality to another level. Now, defense with the binoculars is great. You know, knowing system, who folds, who holds, who goes up. If you don't have the physicality, the work rate, the endurance, the speed of the deck and the collision worthiness... It's like literally doing defense through binoculars. So let's get stuck into that part. I can assure you it's going to be worth every single cent. Now, there's a discount code that you'll receive on email that you can use for 15% on anything um, to do with my products if you've signed up to the webinars. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's push on. The first part of this is going to be theory in some notes and some animation. The actual footage you're going to watch on your own again. There's a lot of animation on the footage. It's going to make things clear for you. But let's set a basis that's going to give you some details that make a massive difference immediately to your set piece defense. So here we go. We're going to start off first with some key principles that you can't go wrong with and some key objectives. The key objective of set piece defense is the following. To get single runners running into double defenders all the time. Okay, so what does that mean? You're always going to have a channel when there's two defenders and that attacker is running into a double and being bullied and tackled backwards and choked up and attacked at the defensive breakdown. You want that. If you set up properly and you get that release phase and that squareness off the line from set piece, you'll get that often and you'll be in control. Now, the second objective is to force a three to, phase, three to four phase shutdown so you get the ball back quickly because there's a very big process that's followed from set piece and it can become predictable and well trained you can get those shutdowns. You want to keep attack in slow ball one pass rugby. So if you come up in the right way and you're squared up and your setups are correct, like I'm going to speak to you about now, you're releasing the vacuums, got a nice anchor, you've got the speed and you square. Once you tackle them back one or two phases and you get an ideal defensive shape, which means the tight forwards are in the middle and the speed is redistributed wider, they'll be in one pass slow ball management. Attack doesn't want that. They want attackers at the line, multiple options, multiple passes to move you around like coast to coast, like butter on toast. So we don't want to give them that. We want to give them one pass rugby. Okay, moving on to the last point and probably one of the most important points. If you don't get the shutdown quickly, we want you in that ideal shape I just described, 13 high, tight in the middle uh, and the speed redistributed to get the turnovers. Okay. Process, process, process. Most important thing in high level rugby, even decent level rugby, is SOS, speed of set. Imagine the opposition, they get a penalty, they want to kick to the line out. They kick to the line out and they walk in quickly, knowing the exact line out they're going to execute and the strike move and the, and the map they're going to run. If you walk slowly to the line out and they get there before you and it's in and out and they play, they're going to be in behind you and you'll be scrambling. So, speed of set, work rate, they tap the ball and kick out. You rush to the line out and you set early. You set early so that you can see the size of the line out. So you'll see if they've got two loose forwards in the back line, for example, you know it's a five man. They've got one loose forward in the back line, you know it's a six man. And you call that and you set your contesting, be ready for them. Okay, that's really, really important. So speed of set, work rate to get there before them. Set your contesting, however your forward coach wants, and who's where, who's in the vacuums, and who's in the back line for you. Now, what's really important is call the options you think they're going to execute. So they might have a six plus one line out where there's a ripper, and you know between the 10 meter line, they're dummy mall, they break out, and they've got moves at the line. Say that you know that's coming. Dummy mall, six is going to break. Watch the inside ball. I've got the inside ball. I've got the sweep, whatever the case is. You let them know that you know what's coming and what options are coming. Get a vibe around that. Okay, so that's the process around this. Speed of set is important. Get to the line out early, set your contesting, call the options, really important. Now there's four wells. Release well, which I'm gonna tell you now is the most important thing. So your last man in the line out 
and your insert, which is like your hooker or your nine. In other words, this guy that's coming into the vacuum. They release at the same time and give you the width from inside that line out. It's really important because you don't, want to, you don't want them coming through the vacuum. The vacuum is the last defender to the first defender out, that void. You want that covered. And as they come up into that vacuum, you want the rest of the line to creep and then accelerate into that space so there's a brick wall in the vacuum. You're going to see what that is now. The next well, so release well is hit well. So you want to buy time for a fold so you can be in control. So the hit well means you either hit and dislodge the ball or you hit and make a dominant hit where they hit the ground so you've tackled them backwards and you get into a counter ruck position or you hit and they're strong but you choke them up, you hold them up, you buy five, six seconds in the grapple tackle and then by the time they go down you've got a great fold and you can take off or you make a negative tackle by accident uh, and maybe bad timing but you still jackal and get in that hole. So you can even choke and get in the hole which is getting in the breakdown or if you, God forbid you make a negative tackle, then you can still jackal in the hole. But the first thing is stop momentum, block off loads. The next phase, so you go release well, hit well, and then you've bought time for the fold. Now you want to fold. Now folding, we can't go into detail now. But I like to fold CBA, smooth around the corner and square. That's important because you electric off your feet and you fly off and you meet the opposition and you hit them backwards. That's how you get the four phase shutdown. Recycle well means whatever backs made the hit, recycle and give you width. All that happens if they play from left to right, for example, you hit on your right shoulder, you're in the breakdown, you made the tackle as a back, you recycle and go opposite way so you don't end up with tight forwards on the wings. Okay, so we've got our process. Speed of set, get to the line out early, call your contesting, call the options, then execute on your four wells. Now this diagram just gives you an example of what I mean about the vacuum, which is the void you don't want them to run into because those are easy meters. So you want to cover 80% of the field. How do you get that extra width from the coast? Is anything coming into that vacuum? Nine running and scooting, playing a blind wing and scooting, last man in the line out and your insert who can be a hooker or nine, he releases and he closes that void. As they do that, the rest of the line comes up nice and square and you can see that there's an anchor and the rest of the line's there. Look how square that line is. Now the yellow are running into the black opposition in the slots being double hit backwards and you're in control. So that's basically the anchor and obviously the backfield coverage is not for now. You've got that anchor and that squareness. So important to get on top of that attack. Okay, in the next one, it's without opposition so you can see more clearly. Channel one is zero to 15 meters, then it's 15 meters to first post. Second post to next 15 is the third meter channel and then the 15 to the other side is the fourth channel. Now look, exactly that release in the vacuum is important. Notice defender one and the hooker, how they square up. They don't turn their shoulders out because they can come back against the grain and go through you. They don't look in because the flight of the ball can beat you and they can get in the vacuum. They come out and they release square and bring the line up square. You'll see in the videos, every time the ball's off the top, the back line's creeping and the release from the inside vacuum is square and they come up. So they make the big double hits, two on one, two on one, two on one, and you stay in control. That is important. Okay, remember you're going to watch the, vacu the uh, vacuum very carefully and the release when you're coaching the vacuum. Now, just the vacuum from malls. I'm not going to go from uh, front ball, middle ball, and back ball. Let's just take middle ball for now. You've got the blind side vacuum, which is on the short side, and you've got the open side vacuum, which is on the open side. There, I've highlighted it for you. Okay, now how you defend that is really important. Obviously, the mall gets going and someone else has to hit, etc. is a different conversation. But just on the basis of what you're seeing there, who takes who on the open side, who takes who on the blind side? Okay, in my video, you're going to see, I actually show you who takes who. Who takes the show and go at where seven is, who takes the nine running with the inside ball, who takes the nine running himself, who takes the short and so on. It's going to be in those videos. Now, watch the videos to the end because it shows how the defense goes hit, uh, release, hit, fold, gets into shape and goes up, up, up till they push up in the coasts or push up in the white channels and get the turnovers. So be patient when you watch. It's all explained. But these the animations and diagram give you the feeling and give you the sensation that you can visualize the, the release of the vacuum, the slots and the shots being made. So that's key, key, key. So those are the vacuums from the line out, from the scrums, uh, sorry, from the, the malls and from the regular line out. Here's an example just of some mapping from a full line out because in the videos you're going to cover full line outs, short and medium targets. So this is just an elementary example. 10 and 12 make the hit. So there's a release phase as you saw earlier. This is the hit phase. Then there's going to be the fold phase. Your back's pull width and you get that nice smooth fold. Now on the first post, you fold three. If the opposition send a lot of guys around, like three, four guys around, you could fold four. 
Notice how you fill inside. Now tight forwards are closer to the rucks and the speed is redistributed. Backfield coverage and how you go high up in the channels will be for a different webinar. Okay, from there, so we went release phase, hit 10 and 12 phase. Now we're going to go um, the recycle phase. So you had release, hit, fold. Now that's the recycle phase. You fill in. And now you have what we call ideal shape, which is the powerful players in the middle, fast players on the edges. And we're ready to go up and whack uh, the opposition. So I hope that helped. You're going to see in the clips coming up, everything is highlighted. Take your time, pause, go through it. Anything you need, get hold of us on info at whistletowhistle.com. DM me on social media. Please do us a favor. Follow us on social media. Join the YouTube channel. There'll be a lot of value stuff. We're going to add some freebies. We add some buy on add-ons but you will get your discount code of 15 percent for signing up for the webinars and subscribing to my channels thanks so much have a look at the videos coming up i'm sure you're going to enjoy them and they're going to add value okay i'm back for the extended version of the webinar so these details are really important and we're going to start off with folding because folding is the key Okay, remember, why is folding the key? Because if you come around the corner, say, and plant A, B, C versus C, B, A, it's a totally different dynamic. Second of all, if you fold with bad posture, you plonk yourself down, you look in, you hold your short, you crouched, that is not going to be a good fold, and that's not going to be good for taking off and exerting pressure with line speed. And if you come out and you chase out too far and your body position's turned out, then your folding is going to be crap as well. So we want to talk about how we're going to fold. So let's have a quick look. So around the ruck, you've got positive ABC around to the right, and on the inside is the negative uh, side of the ruck. Okay, so what's important to know is as you fold, you fill. What does that mean? That means the guys who folded from the inside, if the other guys don't fill the space they left, you have a negative vacuum where the scrum off can snipe or pass to somebody to run through. When you fold in the open side, if you take off skew, they can cut you on the inside shoulder. If you look in, they can beat you on the outside shoulder. So you want to fold well and you want to fill well. So what does it look like if you park? That's parking. A stands, B stands, C stands. The problem with that is players do what we call ruck touching or ruck watching. They touch, 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 then they push. That creates a blockage or what we call a cluster F along, along the breakdown. And you won't get that width to push up and smash. Okay, so we don't want to go park A, park B, park C. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is A goes out first, then B and then C. Now, why is that important? Because we can pull width, we can fold electrically quick and push up or virtually at the same time. Now, I know what you're saying. You're thinking, oh, if he goes out and nine snipes, I'm gone. Okay. If you park first and think you're going to defend the nine and you're alone, nine's going to run around you anyway. If you come around and no one folds inside you and you think nine's going to go, you're at least outside him to push him back into the ruck. You just, as you come around, and you see he's going to snipe you slow, you check him, and trust me, he'll pass. So never just park. The rule for folding is, as I come out, I call the next guy, he comes, and he releases me, the next guy comes, and all three release. If the first guy in this instance goes and no one comes, he will slow till they do come. Okay, so that's A, B, C, folding, C, B, A. So you go out to C, out to B, out to A. What it looks like is that, that smooth motion, one, boom right across one smooth waltzing motion okay again boom square eyes up ready just to push off what does the fold fill look like it looks like this fold fill okay no negatives fold same time you fill and you're nice and square and you're ready to go now remember you need to reference source of possession and possible receiver as you come around. So you square, heads on a swivel, and then you're going to push. If you only look in and they're dummy, when they look, when they're dummy, you're going to look out, you're going to get caught. If you only look up and then, then they, you, you look at the corner of your eye uh, and he snipes, you're going to go look up again and he's going to be gone. If you have your head on a swivel, source of possession and possible receiver, your head will be here. You'll check the dummy and you'll check the pass. Okay. So just to reiterate. You want to be in dogfight position, square. Look at the body position, look at the arrow. Square and ready to take off. The dogfight position is uh, your lead leg opposite to the ruck that's promoted. You're nice and square, you slightly crouch, and you're ready just to push off. So that's going to really help going into the videos. Now, when you watch the videos, I want you to watch the release phase. You've got to be square, like we've just discussed. But on the hit, that fold coming around, C, B, A. So that's part two of the extension of the webinar.
coming to part three soon. Okay, folks, welcome to part three, where I'm going to go into a bit more detail and just slowly explain to you what's important from your setups at set piece that's going to give you that advantage to freaking school the attack and what's going to give you the consistency in your defense. Okay, so what do we say? Principally, you want to do the following speed of set, SOS. So you want to get to the line out quicker than your opposition can because you don't want them walking to the line out super quick, OT, get their play going and getting in behind you. So, how do you do that? As a kick to line on a penalty, for example, you race back, you get into place. And as you're turning back and you're looking up, you want to see, are there two loose forwards in the back line, which indicates a five man? Is there maybe one loose forward in the back line, which indicates a six man? And so on. So you can get your setup right as quick as you can. It also helps you organize your contesting. So speed of set to get into place. Once you're in place, you realize, for example, it's a five man. Is it an insert? In other words, a ripper? And your nine will help you and your and your your hooker will help you identify oh there's a ripper it's going to be a mall or maybe a dummy mall so speed of set get into place set your contesting and recognize the possible plays that are coming and let the opposition know you know they're coming so you call dummy mall watch the inside ball dummy mall watch the break into the vacuum or if you know they come back to the short side say i've got the bailout in the front i've got the short vacuum i'm on the hooker whatever the case may be so speed of set get to the line early Set your contesting, core possible options you're going to face. Okay, now just look at the roles. The short side vacuum is nine's role. The open side vacuum is the last defender who's like a prop and either your insert, which is a hooker or a loose forward that help close that vacuum. Remember, you want to anchor the vacuum or if they get in behind, you bug it. So you don't go diagonally across onto first receiver and you don't go straight up because if you go diagonally across, you're going to get cut in the inside. If you stay too tight, they're going to beat you on the outside. So you release in what we call the banana shape. So the last man releases in the banana and the hooker goes around him and pulls up the line. So you anchor the vacuum and you're all up square. Whoever's standing in the back, uh, in the back uh, where the backs are, a loose forward or just the backs, stand slightly square outside shoulder. Don't turn in, don't turn out. If you look in, you're going to get cut. If you look out, you're going to get cut. So don't do that. So the release phase is important. Hook and last man come up. They creep and they bring the back line up and you lock down that vacuum. The significance of that triangle there is if they play any bailout plays, that the 14 talks to the 9, that he can help make a cover tackle on the blind. And if they go at the base of the, the dummy mall and they play something through the vacuum, 14 is also going to make the cover tackle coming through the main vacuum there. So he talks to 2 and 9 and they talk about their triangle vacuum defense there. Obviously, if they go off the top and play wider, 14 goes into a normal coverage role. So that is that. So that's the setup phase into the four wells. Release well, hit well, fold well. Now let's look at that part now. So here we go. Let's get the vacuums anchored. Let's release well and get the line up super quickly. Remember, you want to creep slightly so that you can fly off the line and go get them. So look at the release. There's that banana arrow. And now he's going to bring up that back line and we're going to fly up. So creep, creep, creep. Anchor. Lock down. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to make our first up shot. So we released well. We hit well, we choked it up, and then, boom, we want to have folded well. Now look at this clip. What stands out for you? Key factor is we folded smoothly, we never touched the rucks. Second of all, we're in the dogfight position. We're on your marks, we're about to take off. Um, the prop, the Callum there is looking in. He should be looking up. That's the only error there. And Mulsey, the center, could have recycled quicker. Otherwise, we're square and ready to take off on flight. So have a look. On flight, they get rid of the ball. Bam, bam, we get up. And we're in their face and we're making their life hell, which is really, really important. From here, after a few phases, you should be in ideal shape, which is the tight forwards in the middle and the speed distributed out wide. Okay, so great shot from Cornel Dupria. And now we're in shape to push up. You'll notice that my wings keep getting higher and higher till we tackle them back. The source of the line out was 20 meters ahead and they're almost going backwards at this point. Nice choke tackle, no momentum, no offload. Buying time for folds and buying times for pushing. You notice every flight the, the defense is pushing up. And you're going to notice in this picture again that they go up, up, up. And they're in the high channels high channels, and um, making shots in the coasts. So there's no space to breathe for the attack. I'll take you through this last phase. Okay, we're nice and square. We're in ideal shape. We're in control now. Back to where the line out started. On every push, we're making our shots. So half decent fold. Callum has a go. He shouldn't have had a look in there. But we push. We push, boom, and there comes the turnover. So that's a perfect example of the release phase, hit phase, fault phase, recycle phase, and being in shape to get the turnover. Remember, you can get a three to four phase shutdown, 
or you can have to defend longer, but you're in shape and you're totally in control. So let's look at the next clip briefly. And then that's us for the vacuum story. So again, I've highlighted nine in red there for the possible front peel because we're in the 22. We've got Francois Hochart there so he can make big tackles. Usually closer to the line, you put a hooker there. So there's the triangle. They're going to talk about the open side vacuum if there's a break. Two and 14 can help there. If they make a front peel, nine and 14 can help with a shot there. So now, pr protocols. Read the play. Is there insert for dummy mall? Is there nine there for a regular play? And so on. We get our setup and we're going to go release well, hit well, fold well. So have a look. We're up, we release well, we're square. Mulsey jumps the gun there because he feels he can cut off the play. I spoke to him after that and he said he wanted to cut off the play, but usually stay in your channels there. For the folding phase, you always ask me how many. From a full line out, you can fold f up to four on, on just inside first post. But if they send their whole attack like you're seeing there, just look up. Vision is everything. You look up, you see their whole attack going around, you can fold slightly heavier. And in this case, we fold slightly heavier, nice and square nobody touches the ruck and we're ready to take off so as you saw in the slides of the folding don't touch the ruck dog fight position push up on flight and that's exactly what we do we make a nice big shot on this decoy play boom we dominate the contact there and we're back up on our feet ready to make shots now we square we're in ideal shape and in shortly in a few phases we get the turnover because we're on top of them so that's the release well hit well fold well recycle well phases and remember, the protocols is speed of set, get to the line out early, set your contesting, speak about the possible options and plays that can unfold, and know your role. All right, folks, welcome back. So now we're going to go into the final part by covering two more clips and just reiterating some key pointers. And we're going to end off with an extra bonus on distributions across the park. Now, distributions mean how many people you have on a five meter blind to handle it, how many on a 50 meter blind, center ruck, and so on. And just I'm going to give you a little tip on when the attacks start to move you around, they go to the wing, uh, so go to the coast play back center and they mix their backs up to play back to the blind and back to open how you know how to adjust your spacing so that's coming up that's distributions on the park that'll be straight off to this so we said read the play anticipate the play you see nathan hughes is a loose forward he's coming in as an insert it's going to be a dummy mall or a mall with certain breakout options so you need to nominate and discuss the possible options coming next of all you need your setup right which we've got there and we need to go into our release anchor phase so here we go once the ball's in the hands of their catchers, you want to start to creep, take the space, and square up and make your shots. So here we go, the release phase into the hit phase. Now that hit wasn't fantastic, wasn't bad, it didn't give a lot of gain line, but it wasn't fantastic. But we released well, and we're managing to fold well, and you'll see we pull quite a nice fold here. Now, you want to look for the attack cues. They send a lot of guys around the corner, we could send an extra two and mirror their fold. Now we make a good second up shot, which makes up for the first one. We're folding, we're square, we're pretty much in shape right across the board. We could have set a bit earlier inside, but we do read the play and they go for the inside ball and bam, we get the turnover within three to four phases. So that's a nice mapping example. Now we're going to go into the breakout moves from the dummy malls. Now what's important to understand is the insert, in other words, your loose forward, he's got to be standing closer when you see that they've got a loose forward as insert. So you see I've highlighted our loose forward. He's got to stand closer to help the guys in the vacuum. Otherwise, their loose forward will break, run into the vacuum, or play options if your loose forward is too wide. So your hooker and that loose forward that's out need to communicate there. So I've made that note. So here we go. They go for a dummy mall. Now, the prop that's there for us should be looking up. He shouldn't be looking in. But now he's square. So what actually applies now is when they run across the face of a mall don't worry about too much where they win the ball they've won it middle there now for now which is the harder part they went in the front it's easy um once they've and the back can be tricky but the middle you've got a nice clear picture so the first guy is a he takes a show and go b takes the insert running and c takes the hard line so have a look he's going to have some options at the line now as you'll see in this video so kvesic has an inside option which a will take that's ted there um, then Kavesic could show and go, of course, and he's going to be taken by B, and there's a hard line on C. So the anchor in the vacuum is closed there. Okay, so moving on from that play, good first up shot, choke, slow ball on the gain line, and a good decent fold. And now the eyes are up, we square. Are we in shape? Are we ready to push? Will they run into double slots? The answer is yes, they probably will. 
Now, Callum has a go there, and if you notice what the attacking breakdown of Exeter did, they tripped Anton Bresler there, they're holding the tacklers down. Don't let them create that space around the breakdown. You've got to be careful there. So on the next push, we're pretty much still in control. We're not really giving a lot of meters away. We're nice and square, and we handle the comeback play, and the backs end up being high in the channels to make their life super hard. Okay, so that's a nice example out of how to hassle. We're back where the line out started. We got up in their faces. We released well, we hit well, we folded well, and we read the sweep and the comeback play. And that's the end of the clip there. We eventually go on a few more phases and we get the, eventually get the turnover coming high again. I just wanted you to see that image. We're in ideal shape, tight forwards are close to the breakdown. We're square in ideal shape and ready to push, 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 and force those turnovers. Okay, folks, now we're at the end point. We're going to discuss one more move. I'm going to show an international match between England and Wales. We're going to talk about the vacuums to get the clear, clear picture on what's what with the vacuums and so on. At the end now, we're going to unlock the key to this thing with the distributions on the pitch. So between the protocols, the principles, your setups, your reading of the play, how to fold nice and smooth, and then the distributions on the pitch, we've got level one foundation. Don't think this journey is over. There's a lot more to go to produce a Savage D that pitches up week in, week out on set piece. Okay, just to remind you, nine's gonna control any bailout plays to the vacuum. The insert in the line out where the last man in the line out covers the vacuum. Now, England here don't have one. And I just wanna show you um, that the vacuum is a little bit more exposed if you do that. That was back then in the warm up games that they used this approach. But now have a look at the open side vacuum and the short side vacuum when you've got two plays coming back on the mall. One to the blind side, one to the open side. So let's have a look. Wales have got a clever play here with um, a comeback against the grain towards the short side, in which case now you've got nine and the, um, the loose head prop covering the blind play coming back. The insert who's at the tail now will take the show and go, and then the, the negative full of the line out will take the inside man. So the release of the line comes up, the rolls are clear, and now we look at who's who here. So have a look. You've got the hooker that's on the show and go. You've got the negative lock that's on Josh Adams coming on the switch, and you've got the reverse line or hard line covered by George Ford. If you see there, um, the line's a little bit staggered, could be a little bit squarer, but that vacuum is how you should cover it, is the loose, loose head prop and the nine take the comeback on the short side, and then the insert and the line come up and they take the switch and the hard line on the open side. All right, folks, so now we're gonna talk about distributions on the pitch. Yesterday, a lot of the guys were asking me and saying, well, in general play, what do we do? How many do we hold on a five meter blind, on a 15 meter blind, on a middle ruck and so on? Obviously from set piece, you need to know your set piece mapping and how that will help you. For example, on a full line out, we know just before the first post, you could fold four. On the first post, you could fold three. Middle post, three. Now, you could fold four on a first post or just inside the first post if, for example, the opposition sent more guys around. That would be a cue, for, for example. If they sent four, you could send four. If they sent two and held the rest to do a comeback play, you'd mirror that, you'd fold two and you'd hold two. But in general play, maybe you attacking, you lose the ball, they start to counter and play, you need to know how many guys to have on the pitch. So let's just give you an easy guide. It's not set in stone, but it's an easy guide. If their nine is loose on a five meter blind, you're gonna need a minimum of one guy. If he's got someone else, I would add one across for in case from the negative because the scrum off and one on a five meter blind could create you a bit of problems. Okay, on a 15 meter blind, now imagine they played to the coast, they played another phase, and the backs stand up and they're gonna replay. You stand up, you see them standing there in a backline form and they wanna play back to the blind, you're gonna need four on a 15 meter blind. If the scrum off has even got two guys, he could run at your second guy and do a catch pass uh, move, that cuts you. So on a 15 meter blind, scrum off in two, I'd put four. Scrum off in three, you definitely need four and maybe a negative full. So 50 meter blind, that's the case. Obviously, they play to the open side. You've got 13 high, four on the blind, and you've got your covers. Okay. What's trickier is the situation I'm going to share with you now. Imagine they looked like they were going to play back to the short side, but in fact, their backs recycle and start to go back to the open side. Obviously, if you overfold, they'll play back to that blind and they'll cut you. If you keep too many on that blind, they'll sweep and try and beat you on the go back to the other coast. So you've got to be alert. So you look up, you see them go, you send one back of yours across, and then one more of the players that were on that short side can go across and push your distribution across. 
now you're more evenly balanced. So look again, they were going to play their, their back swept across, maybe their 13 and their 15 went. You send your 12 or 13, whoever needs to recycle, and then you send one more player across, and then you're covered. Now, from a middle ruck, it's quite difficult, but as long as you've got five to six players, you can push up hard and shut off the wide channels, and we'll talk later about how you get in the passing lane, jam options, and so on, which is a science in its own. But if you've got seven, six, okay, that means you've got 13 up, you can pretty much predict where they're going to go, and you can fold that extra player to be seven on the, the right side or seven on the left side. Six is okay as well. You've got your two covers, and if you're in this type of shape, high and square, um, like we always talk about, high and square and push on flight, you'll be fine. So there we go. That's the, been the bonus feature. This is phase one of set piece defense. This will stand you in great stead. Remember we said we don't want defense with the binoculars. So you need physicality, work rate, speed off the floor. And these are not just things that you just speak about cliched in a cliched fashion. You need to train this stuff. You need to train tackle technique, activate the nervous system and give your guys that functional explosive ability. Remember to check out my, my whistle to whistle website, whistle to whistle.com. I'm telling you the, the functional mobility and Collision Magician, we're going to give you the raw bones of a defense to smash and handle any attack. The system's great, but it'll only work as physical and as active as you are um, in terms of a high level work rate and a high level of physicality. So I hope that helps. Um, please come back to me on social media or info at whistletowhistle.com and I'm happy to help you anytime. Remember, make everything a dogfight.